Welcome Spartans to Mission Debrief. We're playing every mission of the mainline Halo video game series in chronological order, discussing our experiences and sprinkling in a pinch of lore along the way. If you'd like to play along and have your thoughts read on the show, email us at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at podcastevolved on Twitter. If you like what you hear and want to support the show, visit Evolved on Patreon. This episode, we're debriefing the excavation site uh, from Halo Infinite. I'm your host, Colin Perkins, alongside David Arnold. Hello, everybody. Matt Salvatore. How we doing? And Krista Brown. You know who sucks? Bassus sucks. <laughs> I want to like him. I really do. Nah. He's got cool armor. He does have cool armor. Last mission was our final uh, coverage, our, th our third episode of The Connections. Uh, all the all the to-dos, the distress calls, and the Easter eggs. We wrapped that up. So after retaking the, uh, the area's fobs and dismantling multiple banished outposts, Master Chief and the weapon turned their attention to saving marines that were scattered about the island. The duo found a number of oddities along the way, including a giant sandwich? Huh? Oh, yeah. Now in excavation site, Chief and the weapon finally reached the location that Spartan Griffin mentioned in his dying breath. The banished are digging for something and must be stopped. However, Eshram's minions won't go down without a boss fight. <laughs> the, the game is May 28th, 2560. I do want to talk about Griffin a little bit here before we dive in. So he, mm, so I'm going to kind of foreshadow something that's, that's going to come in the future. It's not a big spoiler or anything like that. But he talks about being picked up by Eshiram, um right around the dig site, right? Like, that's kind of how I understood, you know, um, what had happened there. So the audio log, and again, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this in the future because we haven't we have found that audio log yet. But that audio log is dated January 30th. So he was being tortured for five months? Jesus. I mean... That seems that's like a the, long time. That's the dates. That's the dates that we have, which is wild. So he was, I mean, I don't know. Well, I wonder, if it, I wonder if it took him a while to get the armor off without killing him. Like maybe they had to think <laughs> like about it. Like a month it. or two. <laughs> yeah, just to figure out how to take it off without, I mean, like, you know. So maybe it wasn't like direct torture the whole way through, but. Yeah. I mean, he is a Spartan, so. Maybe it's like They're just not very in, like, smart. Iron Man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's like the scene in Iron Man where they just have War Machine in the armor, but like for ages, he's yeah. just sitting in a room. They're like, come right. out. And he's like, no. And they're like, please come out. And they're like, no. <laughs> I like that. Or maybe they made him walk to Jacklock's Tower and like dragged him, you know, like that took a couple weeks. <laughs> they went on a vacation, you know. Then maybe I'm sure they paraded him around times a little bit. And they brought him back. Like there's all, there's all sorts of things. Maybe that's all in the, um, the book, Kelly Gay's book coming up. Oh. It's in there. So anyway. Um, huh. so the other thing I want to touch on is, and I talked about this at the end of the last, uh, mission is now, if you've done everything up to this point, you have enough valor to get a scorpion. So you've done everything, <laughs> but you have to do everything. You have to do all the propaganda towers. You have to do all, save all those damn Marines, um, and do all of the missions up until this point to get enough valor. And you have exactly 2000 and then you can drop a, a uh, scorpion down onto that fob. Uh, what is it, Charlie? I think it's nearby. Drop a scorpion down. Roll in there, and it's pretty much useless in this mission. <laughs> um, I don't know. How did you guys, uh, Matt? I'm curious how, how you did on this mission. Did you did you do the scorpion thing, or did you no, just kind of I, roll in with a with a razorback? Take us through kind of the, the beginning parts of your approach. So I actually I like vehicles, but I'd rather just go on foot so mm -hmm. i think i took a ghost to the location and then i just uh i had a battle rifle and i think i just did battle rifle and assault rifle and i just went went through each uh and this this place has a lot of those little like ammo stations where you can refill mm -hmm. yep. so i was just going through that and i think that's basically how i did it okay. i didn't do anything super 
super flashy. It was just, you know, the kind of the meat and potatoes of Halo. So just kind of roll up. And, and so there's a cut scene that we get to and a little dialogue. So, but like getting into the excavation site, I guess it is empty, isn't it? Like it you, is. You roll in, there's nobody around. Um, and it's then, quiet. Yeah, it's quiet. You're like, mm, Too what's going on? Quiet. And you've kind of seen this building, you know, as we're going all the way around, we're like avoiding this location yeah. because we want to get all of the valor and everything. And then you, you kind of you roll in and you see a bunch of trees that are like dead and um, this, it, it looks like it's burned down, right? This little area. So it's, it's mm-hmm. a cool little setting once you kind of get into this area. And then, um, you know, you drive whatever you have in. The other thing I'll just mention with my Scorpion, I, got, I did end up getting my Scorpion, like I j- jimmied it all the way into the, um, you know, this little hole right here in the, in the side of the cliff. And then as soon as I triggered the cutscene, the tank disappears. It's gone. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I can't, I can't, really? I can't what? It. Yep, it's gone. Bye bye. But um, you can go back to a fob, so you can start this mission, and then you can fast travel back to a fob and get another one. Yeah, because there's one right there. It's by that other looking spire. Oh, there is a there is one nearby. Oh, uh, I guess one. if you uh, uh, oh no, there's a fob. Oh no, that's there's a, a fob nearby. Yeah. yeah, there's a fob nearby, but yep, yep. So you can just go back there, and like the the mission won't reset or anything like that. Like you don't have to cool. do the dialogue again. You can just go fast travel back to that point, which is pretty slick. So I, did, I ended up doing that just to see what would happen. Um, so the, so the key they, is to go in, trigger the cutscene, then go back and get the scorpion. Don't bring the scorpion tank first. Exactly. Yeah. Don't waste your time. Yeah. Right. So David, you want to talk about this little dialogue here? Okay. Yeah. So we get this like little cutscene just as you kind of approach the mind laser, the trap that you everybody knew was coming gets sprung and um this big huge laser just kind of pumps out uh but the weapon is kind of funny where she kind of walks up and says like it's kind of quiet there that tunnel the banished must already be down below uh chief kind of goes up you get a little small cuts into this and then um the weapon's kind of looking at the tunnel going like this should be impossible like foreign ally is almost indestructible what do you think mm-hmm. they she turns around Big laser beam. She shells at Chief. She dodges a big master laser beam uh, that comes to the city in a sense. Starts kind of cutting through. Uh, and then you're just kind of left to, okay, obviously i got to turn this off. But then this is the track then. Then enemies kind of start populating this kind of, kind of pull. Or do enemies come down yet? Or do you kind of go up yep. first? Yep. Yeah, they like, do. you see do. drop pods and like all stuff happens. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. The trap is sprung. It's really cool. But there's a, there's another step. So so f- um, we need to get up into the control room of this excavation site uh, or the drill, I guess, whatever you would call it. So we need to fight our way up into that. And you can really just sprint. There's little gravity lifts on both sides of the thing. So you can really just sprint over there. Um, you may have to, to fight a little bit. Um, feel free to spend time. I don't know. Krista, did you spend time clearing people out around in this area or did you just go right for the gravity lifts? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, sorry. Uh, definitely. Uh, I kind of cleared some guys out, and then I headed up. Um, it's funny. I don't know where this Marine came from, but some Marine followed me. Mm. Um, oh, and nice. he was in that cutscene where the laser turns on, and he was just kind of standing, like, right by the laser while Master Chief was, like, rolling out of the way. Um, oh, funny. Yeah, he was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> was he there after the cutscene, too? <laughs> yeah, he was yeah, He was after the cutscene as well. It was funny. Oh, he was just awesome. standing right in front of the laser. <laughs> yeah I, so i was doing i was clearing out um or i was saving a bunch of mar- marines from pre- previously and so i rolled in let's see i no, i did so okay anyway so the marines will follow you a long way i guess this is a story from the previous episode but like the you, marines will stick with you like i gave one of the marines a um spartan or no it was a uh sentinel beam and then i was going around to save a bunch of other marines and like that guy stuck with me almost the entire time it was fantastic and mm. it, it, I love how they just randomly show up into missions too. It's very good. Yeah, I think it has a lot to do with like if you've just uh, freed uh, a fob or if you've uh, rescued some marines, those marines will just like st- like attach onto you, and then if you leave them, they'll eventually get there if you give them mm-hmm. enough time. And the only way I can tell them apart is by the weapon that they're holding too. Mm. You mm-hmm. know, it's like oh, that's that's Billy Bob. He's the one that's got the Sentinel beam. All right, let's go, buddy. I gave him the steward. Billy Bob. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Billy Bob Beam makes sense. All my Marines are named Jeff. Like it's it's just always Jeff. All of them. I do like how like there's loads of Marines scattered around here, like all around the excavations, Mm -hmm. like like outside it. Like they were like monitoring it and stuff like that. It's kind of cool. 
the way they kind of mm-hmm. set them up. And um, yeah, up um, if you're looking at the excavation site, there's like a group of Marines pretty close up on the kind of high right ridge, and that's where the mm-hmm. um the BR breacher is just sitting there. And I always oh. beeline straight to the breacher and pick it up, and I keep it for like most of the game, like every time now when I go there because it's just it's just kind of the super powered um br which is great um so i kind of always go will there. regular br armor or ammo fill that thing back up yep. or do you have to yep. it's just kinetic ammo oh well. yeah that's dope i don't know if like regular br will do it actually it doesn't you have to go you have to get the kinetic ammo boxes to resupply okay it. yeah because if you go to the fob it treats it as two separate the the different brs it treats it as two separate ammos i got you nice all right, so we um, go up the gravity lift here. We fight through not really much. There's like some jackals and some grunts and a couple, you know, weak little brutes that are inside. Um, so you, you know, take care of business up there. Then you go and smack a button uh, as you're overlooking. It's actually kind of cool. So you, you up, up into the control room, you can see this laser beam digging into the side of the wall there. Um, and and then we have a little bit of dialogue. Um, David, what dialogue do we have? We have... Um, look at the controls by that window. Chief heads over pretty much to push the button. And the weapon kind of thinks that she can just totally do it like normal. Because you've seen in the game the, the weapon just like being mm-hmm. totally perfect at like deactivating and interact- interacting with stuff. Uh, but she's just like, she snaps her finger. Nothing kind of happens and she goes, oh, something's wrong. I can't shut it down. And then John straight away is like, we destroy it because like, that's what John does. Uh, but the weapon is like, yeah. <laughs> she's ready for him, which I thought was pretty cool. I was like, way ahead of you. Um, you have two power, two power regulators. You manually open them up and you shoot a bunch of stuff. So kind of stuff we kind of know we're kind of used to doing because um, if you've done some of the kind mm-hmm. of, um, I'm blanking out the, what, what they're called now, other bases, the big ones. Why am I totally blanking outposts. on them? Outposts. Yes, the actual um, outposts. You know, yep. you push a button, this big reactor pops up, you shoot it. Um, these ones are designed yep. slightly differently, um, but it's cool. It's like, obviously, we know what to do. She says, um, and by me, I mean you, and by trigger, I mean shoot or blow up. You get the idea. Um, mm-hmm. Great bit of dialogue here. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, more or less, blow stuff up, which we're used to. And the other cool thing is that the back door of the control room area like folds down and then you can go out the back and then you can actually yep. decide if you want to go to the left or to the right and, and which of those two uh, regulators that you want to take out. And, and they are, like like David said, they're a little different. So they, like we've seen these little um, power coils, right, um, all throughout the game at this point, you know, to open doors or, or do other things. Um, but there's two of them. So like this this structure, I guess, raises up and there's the one on the top top and then there's one at the bottom and you gotta blow them both up to then finish that actually before you do that excuse me i missed this is that you there's a trigger there's a um i don't know like a dial from remember halo 4 when on the dawn mission where he grabs it and he's like like pulls it out right um mm-hmm. this is one of those things so he kind of you have to twist it and pull that out and then that will raise this little you know tower that has the two coils that you have to destroy so do that first on both of the sides and then um uh, and then you can continue to proceed. Krista, I'm curious on your thoughts of, of this mission, um, kind of this portion of the mission, right? So we've, we've gotten to the little cutscene, we've got a little dialogue, we've gone up, we've got a little more dialogue, and now we got to go do some some chores. Um, I didn't mind it at all. Uh, I thought it was fun, you know, the drop pods coming down. It's obviously very similar to all the outposts and stuff we've been doing throughout mm-hmm. this game. But, you know, it's kind of fun because... You know, if you listen, some of the AI talk about Bassus. Oh my God, Bassus is gonna be so mad, and blah blah mm-hmm. blah blah. It's like, hmm, who is this Bassus man you are mm-hmm. they're talking about? Um, we'll never see him. No, no, no. He's just probably some background guy, right? Um, I like the way this is laid out. I think it's really fun. I like the laser in the background. Um, you know, you know, blowing stuff up is just so Halo. So yeah. it just feels very natural to go and do it. Um, the amount of enemies is really good. There's a bunch of weapons all over. Um, there's a lot of enemies, I found. Like, if yes. the first time I struggled with this, because there's a lot. There's somebody yeah. over there in the shade turret, and there's another shade turret, and there's a berserker brutes, and then they're like they throw a lot at you. They do, yeah. 
I, I think it's good. I think it feels super epic. I think it's just kind of a fun Halo romp of a mission. You know, mm. just the go kill guys, push button, blow something up. You know, I, I <laughs> it's nice that there is like an end goal to this that I really like. So it's, you know, you can see the laser and then you get to see, you know, the laser turn off. And I kind of like stuff like that. So I thought it was a good mission overall, you know, I thought this part was good, I thought it was fine, I mean, obviously it's not spectacular, but it's still, you know, you get cool weapons and you get to shoot things, I mean, what more do you want? Yeah, it's a different take on a lot of Halo missions, because it kind of, it gives you, like, an arena, instead of, like, a straight line, normally we're doing, we're running down a straight line here, it's like, here's an area, you gotta go two things, and there's a bunch of enemies, kind of, you know, Mm. trying to stop you. Um, Infinite kind of does that a lot, though. It's kind of more big areas that you're fighting in rather than the corridor crawling that we're mm-hmm. used to. Right, right, right. Because the straight line is made more for getting to that point. Um, I really like this, uh, the way the mission is laid out because right off the bat, it sets you off that there's a trap, you know, because, like, you know, this is a, a banished site and nobody's here. So mm-hmm. I like that you walk into it and you're like, yeah, it's a trap. And then when you go up to turn off the laser, you're like, this is probably a trap. And so (laughs) right when you're, you know, when she's saying, I can't do, you know, I can't take it out. You got to do this. You're like, am I going to, is there going to be another trap? And so I like that you're, for me, I was always kind of waiting for uh, the next shoe to drop. And uh, so when Bassus finally does, you know, jump up behind you. there in a little bit. Then you kind of have it. Yeah, Yeah, but. Uh, no, I really do like this mission. I do like the idea of uh, like activating these little pylons or, uh, and then taking them out. Um, mm-hmm. But on a whole, this mission, though, like if you just kind of narratively told it to someone, it's a very short mission that way. Yeah. But there is a lot of enemies to keep you preoccupied, and it's, 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 not, an easy, it's not an easy task. So I, I do like that it's challenging in that respect. Yeah, I found because I had played it before – a couple times i was like okay i, I kind of know what to do um it, it makes the mission even shorter but yeah. like so many halo missions the first time you're kind of problem solving figure out the best approach and what right, weapons right. you need and all that sort of stuff david what did you think about this before the the pre i really loved reveal? it i i really like the setup i like the map i like the layout the, it's a really fun fight especially with like drop pods coming in phantoms mm-hmm. coming in all the time and the snipers around and just the layout and where all the kind of weapons are and even like where the power cores are they're not like in the exact same place on either side one of them's in like a cave that's kind of cool you can approach that in different ways one of them is like way more open but has like stationary kind of turrets mm-hmm. and stuff around it so i love it like it, it's a great fight with marines when you're bringing them around i can't wait to play this this map in co-op and stuff you, I, I imagine it'd be so much more fun um it, it's really good i really really enjoyed it i, li- I liked the premise i liked the layout of it i like the way how like matt was saying is this bit the trap or is that bit the trap is there more trap trap to trap trap um it's good it, like for something that's an mm-hmm. obvious trap i liked how it played out um yeah yeah exactly you know it's a trap and you're waiting for the trap to go and that that right there yeah. builds the anticipation but uh i think colin you were right calling this an arena because it, it really it really feels like an arena of battle where you have a little bit of everything and the way it's all laid out and more enemies yeah, are dropping in it is it is like, like a, a little, ghost and little like arena a there brood chopper and stuff around there's plenty of like there's even like a, a marine turret mm-hmm. do you know what i mean the, mm-hmm. the drive oh well so so i do have a story so i did go back and i got the tank so i triggered the stuff i went back i fast traveled brought the tank in and and so it it, it actually did make the one side super easy um which was closer to the the charlie so it must be the east side so i rolled in there and i just i just blew everything up right i, I was you're able to kind of stay on the high ground and just blow out all the shade turrets blow out all the enemies you can get to most of the um the coils that you need to to blow up um for the um what do they call it the cooling regulators so you're able to do that but then i ended up driving it down under the um the structure the the drill and then you know how there's the grav lifts that are there the grav lift took my tank <laughs> with oh, it. No. and so and you can't get it out right so like I so was under... it just stuck like yeah. up top yep 
<laughs> it so picked I, up the I, tank. I wanted to see what would happen. I was like, okay, maybe it's too heavy for the gravel. Nope, I drove <laughs> over the gravel and it took the entire thing up. And then I, you know, it's just stuck there. You can get out and I could like get to the hole uh, that the gravel is getting me so I could get in the structure. But then I couldn't get my tank anymore. So <laughs> I ended up, I did end up going back and getting another tank just to see what it was like. But it really wasn't worth it for the for the other side of it. Because of that one that's in the cave, like it's just a big pain in the butt to, to maneuver a tank in that area. Hmm. So anyway, I ended up, there are, uh, so, so that's the one side with the shade turrets and a bunch of brutes that drop in and all that sort of stuff. The other side, the west side, is where there's a ton of jackal snipers up top. Uh -huh. um and you know they'll they'll just keep they'll just keep uh pinging you if you don't take care of them so um i do have another story to talk about in a little bit um but i do want to i do want to talk about the rest of this mission so you so you blow the things up and then you you, you know you, you take the coils out and then we got to go push the button again and there's another a little bit more dialogue and this is where we the the, the real trap happens david takes through that yeah, so you go up to push the button and you think it's going to be like it was before and the weapon kind of drops, but right before she does, you get pulled in by this Ron Perlman looking brute um, and he's all in gold. Bassus shows up. He's really cool. That just hit me right there. His, his armor is crazy. And he has a massive ha He's got a massive hammer and yeah. the kind of cut seems really cool the way it's played out in first person here. He's about to smash you. You kind of like use your grapple hook to kind of move away along the ground it's pretty cool uh, and then it just drops you straight into a boss fight and now depending on your level of preparation for this boss fight this is either absolute pain in the balls or super easy uh depending because like mm -hmm. you're trapped inside the excavator it's not yep. a whole lot of area to move around he's running at you with a grab hammer now there is a rocket launcher in here there is a couple of weapons kit around but like it really helps to use grenades use your environment to use whatever you can and like on the higher difficulties absolutely just come up here and start dropping heavy weapons around the place just to set yourself up for success otherwise you, mm -hmm. you are screwed yeah yeah he's a beefy beefy boy matt, matt what do you think about it well the first time i played this i knew that there was another trap coming so i'm like okay either when i push this button again either mm -hmm. i'm gonna have like a whole swarm of active camo elites on me or there's going to be a boss fight right so i brought a skewer and now now that you play it i always bring as much heavy weapons as i possibly can um so i brought i usually bring the skewer and a rocket launcher um which isn't actually a good pairing because you want to take out his shields first so mm -hmm. usually i'll drop the i'll drop the skewer there and trade it out for something that i can take his shields out with but uh i i use the grapple shot a lot I think I basically just like run in a circle the whole time and occasionally I'll turn back and I'll shoot him, but I'm constantly just spamming the grapple shot to get away from him. Uh, usually it works pretty well. I think of all the times I've fought Bassus, I think I've, I've only played normal, but I think I've only died once. Oh, wow. Nice. But that's on, that's on normal. So I mean, but you're running around using your grapple yeah, shot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm running around and I'm like, ah! <laughs> Help! He, he kicked my ass the first time on normal i was not ready for oh, this yeah. boss fight uh -huh. oh i knew something was coming though like i could feel the next trap yeah it's a much that's... tighter spot than the tremonius fight right? yeah so. well i think that's what makes it so difficult is they put you in this tin can with this brute cheap in it and he's got a grav hammer and he's just like bang 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 yeah he's yeah and he's just like, yeah, exactly. Like he he doesn't he doesn't casually walk. Like he's a he's a sprinter <laughs> and a jumper, long yeah. jumper. Yeah. Krista, how'd, how'd you do? Uh, I did great actually. He was a piece of cake. Nice. What'd you use? Uh, so I'm playing on heroic. Uh, I threw one of the fusion coils in his face. Mm -hmm. Um, at the very beginning, which took his shields down to pretty much nothing. Oh, nice. Yeah, I took out the rest of his shields with uh, just some assault rifle, and then I had a skewer, and I just hit him three times with the skewer, and he died. That was it? Well, you yeah. still had to reload, but still. So you had to oh, yeah, a little bit. so with the reloads, you know, you have yeah. to grapple shot. So I'd grapple shot the furthest amount of distance I could get away from him, reload, mm -hmm. and then grapple. At that point, he'd be right by me again. I'd grapple shot across the map again and then shoot him. Nice. And when you need that skewer, it takes for 
forever to reload. I know. I'm like, oh my. And so, like, I'll switch weapons, and then I'll be like, oh, I'll just switch to my skewer, and then I'll switch, and I'll be like, oh, great. I had I to reload. reload. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll be like, I'm dead. I want yeah, that I perk where my second weapon. Yeah, I wish you could reload while you were grapple-shotting, yeah, but you exactly. can't. Give me that second weapon perk where it just reloads automatically, magically. Mm-hmm. Krista, did you, how was it the first time? Do you remember the, your first time fighting the Um, I think I struggled with it a little bit, but I just, I wasn't using my equipment as much on my first playthrough until towards the end of the game when I just started getting used to, you know, just how things worked and how the weapons worked and stuff like that. I think I died once or twice, but then I kind of got it. I'm an expert now, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right so now i guess you know sorry i'll, I'll, I'll chime in with my bassist story everybody's got that bassist story uh so again back back to, back and forth to the fobs this is all possible um I, I cleared out the the cooling thingies um so that's all done and now the next thing is to go trigger the trap so i went back to the fob i went and got my calcine disruptor that david loves and a rocket launcher and so I came up to the, to the site, and I still had – I didn't clear out everybody before I left, so I still had some some clearing out to do, so some jackals shooting at me and stuff like that. So I went and grabbed a um, one of the turrets kind of on the western side. I think it was um, the machine gun turret, and then I ended up switching over to – there's like a there's a plasma turret that I grabbed too. So just to kind of get me into the, to the gravity well, so I didn't have to use any of my calcine disruptor ammo. I just wasn't sure if I needed to use any or not. And I could save all my rocket launcher ammo. So I went up there, triggered Bassus, and then the Calcine Disruptor once again just melted his his uh, uh, shield and a couple of rocket launchers, and he's done. Oh. So if you know what you're doing, if you have the right tools, he's not difficult at all. Um, but if you come in with you know an assault rifle and a pistol, and you're gonna have a hard time. Some of us like to feel panic, though, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. And I mean that's how I felt on my first run because I didn't do much of the side stuff, so I didn't have all the, the you know additional weapons right. unlocked and things like that. But uh, second time around, it's a lot, a lot easier. Um, okay, and then so we kill him, and then we get to go finally push the button. And this one's a little funny. I felt like the I don't know if how you guys felt about this cutscene. David, I'll let you take us through it really quick. I know they're all kind of like little short conversations with with Chief and the weapon. But she feels a little weird on this one. I don't know about how you guys felt. What do you mean weird? Well, she she comes a little aloof in her last comment. Um, what does she say? Um, she kind of says, "You've done your part. Now for mine." She cracks her knuckles and goes, "Watch this!" Mm-hmm. And then she hacks the terminal, and John. And then there's like nothing happens. And then John's like, "Is there a problem?" And she's like, "Of course not." Snaps her fingers, and the laser turns yeah. off. Yeah. You think that's weird? The, the, her her delivery on the of course not seems aloof it's like it feels like something else is going on you know and, and i don't think it was intentional but it just the delivery no, of that specifically i get i get what you're saying i get what you're saying she she kind of pauses funny yeah and you think like something more is about to happen yeah because she's like of course not like like maybe she's trying to figure stuff out or she's getting gaining more information i don't know it's just it's a little weird but um yeah, she you know she snaps her fingers. This giant explosion happens, which is cool, and then you have access to directly. You know, it's cool because you can see down. Now here's the that hole, and this is the conservatory. And uh, Griffin was specifically talking about the conservatory, and she's saying conservatory is down there. Here's another weird thing about this, from my opinion. Why were why was the drill even going? Because they were. She also says later on that they were like, "There's a bunch of banished down there." So what was the point of the drill? Why was the dr- was the drill only there to stop Chief from going down there? That's, that's how I that's what I always thought it. it was. It was just like we can't okay. physically block this hole, so we'll just turn the laser on, so we can't walk into it. That's what I always thought it was. I, okay. well, like I think the fir- the first initial part of the laser was we're gonna kill him with this laser because he's standing right there. I don't know mm-hmm. if they actually thought and they'd then... hit him with the laser though. I mean, maybe. Well, I mean, I think that's why they waited to have him standing right there. Because why turn it on? Yeah. Why Why not just leave it on? So I guess that's the first trap. I guess right? they, they want to yeah. lure him that there and then drop everything on t- in on top of you. Admiral Adbark should have just come out and been like, it's a trap! <laughs> exactly. Uh, there is some more dialogue. Uh, the weapon talks about how the laser was modified. 
to cut into the ring because that's not shouldn't normally be a thing and then there's just some back and forth like who would have modified this because bassus is too dumb but who would have <laughs> modified this and there's some more kind of i think foreshadowing that's going on with things that we have yet to see it's not his fault con he's a brute <laughs> right the other good line that uh john says all right so we're gonna go down there more or less and then she says are you scared uh, oh, cause, cause, cause she said there's probably another trap and he's like, yeah, you know, whatever. And then, um, she asked him if he's scared. He says, of course not. Uh, he says, no. And she says, of course not. I've got you keeping me alive. Oh, and the 63 millimeter of titanium alloy wrapped around your neural interface. I'll be fine. So essentially <laughs> she's living inside chief. If he dies, she'll still be fine. <laughs> All right. That is excavation site. Anything else to mention before we get into... Um, what do we do next? Trivia. We've talked about trivia. I guess we go, oh, we'll do audio logs. Yeah, anything you guys want to talk about before audio logs, just the mission in general? Uh, I, I did. I'm good. I think it. I think it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, I, I did have a funny moment when I replayed this um, for this mission DB for like, I had a troop, car, uh, a Razorback full of dudes, all had special weapons, feeling pretty confident. I got out of the, of the Warthog and moved up to activate the cutscene. All the dudes followed mm -hmm. me and they were in the cutscene just milling around uh, and the laser yes. turned on all of them stood there and took the laser to the face totally alive oh, the no. cutscene ended oh and then i turned around and went what the hell and they all died instantly in an explosive fashion <laughs> and it was like holy shit <laughs> um so i thought that was pretty like all all like five of them just gone I was like, That's it was actually a trap yeah. you know he they trapped him and them and then they killed him <laughs> i felt really bad oh man that's sad that was funny Let's do, before we do the audio logs, let's do the rating quick, because I've forgotten to do that a couple times. Let's do a rating. We'll go around the room quick. Give me quick. Matt, I'll throw it to you first. Ooh. From 1 to 10, give me a quick rating on Excavation Site. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I'm going to go 7. 7? Krista? Um, I can do a 7. I think seven's pretty fair for this mission. It's not spectacular, but it's decent. Yeah. Yeah, David? exactly. I'm feeling a bit hotter. I'm feeling an eight, but I could live with a seven. Um, Whoa. But I, I, I really like this. I just think it's got a fun environment. There's loads of tools. Um, I don't know. They probably could have done more with it, I think. But um, yeah, okay. I'll go seven. I'll talk myself around on it. Well, you want to go down to seven? Yeah, I mean, you can give it an eight if you want. Yeah, yeah okay. What are you going to do, Colin? What are you going to do? <laughs> I'm going to go six because oh there's, there's not Oof. much storytelling here. So in like like the tasks is like it feels like an outpost, you know we've kind of been doing a couple outposts recently. It's like all right, here's some outpost stuff to do. Um, when you know what you're doing, it's not a lot. It's not very difficult. And then uh, the bassist fight is the same thing. It kind of loses its luster once you have the right weapon. So mm. I'm gonna go six. Ouch. Oof. There. Bassist deserve better. Call me. Exactly, bassist. <laughs> <laughs> big ugly face justice for basses <laughs> <laughs> all right so we have some audio logs so there are t there's a banished audio log uh Eshram's testimony and then there's two um two unsc audio logs oh i didn't mention the collectibles we normally do that too so there's a mule near armory down in kind of the western corner of the uh the site there's some jackals that are and there's a um a shade turret above so there's a mule near armory down there there's a banished nameplate for you if you get that, two Spartan hmm. cores. There's one in a building, kind of on the south side of the site. It's it, you actually have to go up to the second floor to get that one. And then there's another Spartan core that's on a cliff, uh, again on the south side, overlooking the excavation site. So you can kind of climb up there. And I think there's like a sniper rifle or something else uh, right next to it. So two Spartan cores, one Mueller armory, and then let's get into our banished audio logs. We okay. have. Uh, go ahead, Matt. Take it away. All right, so the first one that I'm going to do is I'll do the ones outside and then we'll go in. Uh, we have the prisoner uh, yeah. audio log. And this one is on, I guess, if you're looking at the – it's more on, like, the western side of the of the map if you're looking at it from that angle. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one is uh, the prisoner. So it goes Lucas Browning is talking. This one's actually inside, though. It's inside the mining laser. No, that's – it's – there's two uh, audio logs. Yeah, What's it's up? on the the, hey, hey, the excavation it's, it's side inside the uh, the mining laser. There's a there's a banished audio log. Yeah, it's in the control rooms. room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, 
said only a human could open it. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. They held my hand against the surface. It was cold. So cold it burned. I screamed for them to stop, but then... But then it began to open. Slowly. Pieces moved. Slid open, and then I saw her... face. Oh, God, she was... smiling. I am the Harbinger, she said. All that you know shall be undone. And do you know what he said? Asherim? He said... Good. <laughs> hmm. She's so just like, I'm gonna is... blow everything up. And he's like, sweet. Yeah. That guy sounds like he's having a bad day. <laughs> he, he is. Very, very bad day. This poor, poor Lucas Browning. I know, um, right? Poor guy. There's more to find out. Like, there's they're really setting this stuff up, and and I, it'd be it's interesting to know if people are playing along with us to know if they've kind of figured stuff out, like what's going on. But like, there is a reveal right here in an audio log of a character that we need to know about. Uh huh. Uh huh. And that's it. And they've otherwise they've just hinted at this character through other stuff. Yep. Yep. We've seen a couple of like open. We've seen the open casket. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think this is the first reveal of a name, though. I don't think they've yeah. said name, have they? Mm, maybe they uh, mentioned it. In, uh, in no, the... because the brutes refer to her like her, or that's what she. Yeah. 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 Interesting. And introduces herself in this audio log. Okay. Know. Next up, we have the Reverie, and this is, well, it's before you reach the excavation site. Um, it's like on a, it's like near a crash truck, uh, near some weapons. So it's it's a little outside of the outside of the excavation site, but it's 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 in that vicinity. What am I looking at? Frigate, Molson class. Hull identification reads Mortal Reverie. If we're going to make any noise on this ring, we need a base of operations. It's beat to hell, but it's shelter. Defensible location, no sign of banished activity. Yeah, this could work. Any Spartans in comms range? Spartan Griffin is in range, but his signal is diminishing rapidly. I'll keep it brief. Open up a channel. I think we found our rendezvous point. So this is setting up the uh, outpost Termonius, right? What that that ship is and i know we talked about it a little bit earlier in the series but david didn't think uh that this was the reverie like that ship was the reverie but this audio log specifically is saying nope that is the mm. reverie yeah i guess i missed <laughs> i'm kind of paying attention because it's way different when you're when i was reading them than when i was actually listening to them in the game i don't know i just didn't pick up on a uh -huh. and, like reverie just sounded like a yeah. forerunnery thing more so than like a, mm -hmm. a an actual human ship but uh, that's cool but that's Okay, I have a quick question. It's legit, though. though. Like, it's legit. Yeah, I'll let you ask the question in a second, but it's legit. It's right. They're, they're doing a lot of this storytelling. Again, it's not necessary for the immediate story that Chief is doing, but it's interesting stuff, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then they're they're doing it through an audio log. It's a good audio log, but I would I would have liked to have something more, like a little screen that pops up that like shows the image of Outpost Tremonius, the Morning mm -hmm. Reverie, or something like that, just to kind of draw that connection. So I feel like that's that that is. Uh, enriching information for the player. Well, it's it's a very understated storytelling where it doesn't hang a lantern on it or like point to it and go, "See, look, look, look." It just tells you very calmly, casually, and you as the as the reader or the player are meant to string them together. Mm -hmm. Okay, my question is is that this uh, <clears throat> indicates that Spartan Griffin is in range, and so you said that he was picked up near the excavation site. So is mm -hmm. this, is this, did she scan right when he was getting taken by Eshram? No, this is dated December 15th. Okay, so this is before. This is he what, got like a month or so before, yeah. So okay. they're still kind of tooling around the, right, cause, the ring. Right, right, because they like, they had like a, a battle at the Reverie, like it was their last stand and then they all scattered. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's to come, but Okay. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> last one is this one's. I think my favorite of all the audio logs are probably Eshram's testimony, just because okay. they're a little more uh, soulful. The last chief has returned. This should anger me, but strangely it does not. It invigorates me, gives me no purpose. Use a war, Chief, with no war left to win. I could not have wished for a more world. 
No, I'm pretty sure Aatrox just fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. That, I mean, that's interesting. Uh, so, all right. So, I have a thought here. Perfect. I think we talked about this already. Chief was found floating outside the ring. Yep. The ring. So, something happened to the ring, right? I think we talked about that at some point. And the ring is no longer where it was. Correct. So Chief must have also gotten moved in whatever happened, right? Yeah, well, think of all the debris that's still around, that, like, the Banished are, like, still harvesting and, like, pulling things out of. Like, there's obviously, like, a debris field that also got pulled in. But give... Sure. I, I know, I know we're, we've kind of, like, we're bouncing around here, but, like, the Infinity was should be relatively close to where Chief would be, presumably. So, like, I don't really know if they're playing kind of... I guess they probably don't have a defined area of what what came and what didn't. I guess just for convenience sake, Chief had to get pulled in and Infinity had to be left behind. Yeah. But whatever. Right. But that plays into this because like Eshram's saying, okay, you didn't kill him on purpose. You just kind of left him floating and assuming that he would survive and then get down to the ring and then the rest of the Banish could take him out or something like that. But, or he just um, stayed the, in the space and watched the... watched everything happen. Watched Infinity get blown up. Oh, watched sure. everything get taken over. I don't know. Yeah. Or or did Aatrox know that he would need Chief later? Mm. Hmm. Right. Or maybe the Brutes would. Right. Like maybe the Harbinger and somehow Chief are connected. Because you know, I know nobody likes to talk about it, but in Halo Four, the Librarian did do something to Chief that made him different. Yeah. Upgraded him. That's true. So who knows? Maybe the Master Chief's the key to everything. Yeah, it's it's like the last sentence that is interesting. Everything else before that, and the beginning of this audio log is like, oh yeah, we know, we know, Ashram, you you're happy that he's here and you're excited and all that sort of stuff. But then that last comment is at least worth thinking about. Right? Well, it's it's also like like kind of like um, what's the best way to put it? Like the prophets are like uh, cultist leaders, where they're like, oh yeah, that was totally planned by our religious forefathers. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. exactly you know, like it's just propaganda, right? But he's saying this to himself, though, right? So this is his like his true. memoirs. So like he actually believes it. Yeah, that's true. Okay, let's do community, and we'll get out of here. Um, who's ready? Krista, you ready? I'm ready. Ready. Right. Go, Chris. All right. Uh, call in February twenty fourth, twenty twenty two, at nine fifty three a.m. Wow, you're thinking of Halo really early in the morning. I'm always. <laughs> <laughs> Bassus moonlights as a blank. Describe his second job. <laughs> Question for mission debrief: Halo Infinite excavation site mission. Colin, you're just asking for it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So He's a milk Matt. Driver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Matt says a uh, brutal eats driver drives your food in under thirty minutes or nothing because you're. Are you gonna complain about a nine foot tall? 1,500 pound Jirahani chieftain. Uh, Yo Mama says uh, the way... <laughs> what? Um, okay, so uh, he says the way he fisted me during that fight, he's oh either God. a gastroenterologist handing out free colonoscopies on a daily or a famous actor under the Pornhub anal category. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, Jedi Spartan 38 says, uh, Moonlights, as a Wookiee, his first appearance was in Star Wars Holiday Special. He, I think he might be Lumpy from the Star Wars Holiday Special. <laughs> oh, don't bring me back to that. it was a young Bassus playing Lumpy. <laughs> God, oh, if you gosh. haven't watched that, you should watch it. It's on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Do it. It's it'll change your life. It will really change your life. <laughs> so there, there is just really briefly, there is a podcast out there. Uh, talk star wars that i was on uh, an episode um where it was my first time watching it so you can actually have a live commentary reaction 
to my reaction for the first time of me watching the holiday special. And it is, I don't know if it's like I'm speechless or if it's just, uh, I don't know, but you can, it's out there in the ether. Nice. I watch it every Christmas. Not even joking. Well, it does have those holiday vibes, you know. It is. It's a holiday special. All right. <laughs> Solo Akel says, uh, Moonlight's as a butcher for meat to supply the brutes. Um, so many, so the brute leader can be at his best with energy for him to call chief. Uh, the pesky burb says, a uh, stunt driver tried to do a backflip in a ghost off of a scarer, but it exploded from his swag. And that's why there is a huge blackened area around the dig site. <laughs> <laughs> <Jeepers>. <laughs> um, Postman's Pat says, my companion, because Jess was shot. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, Desudo says, uh, he is in that anal porn your mama watches. Goes by the name uh, Furry McCock Bestiality Bassus and Jiro Han Anal Jack. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, I paid to see dad, uh, says he has many side jobs, lawyer, doctor, teacher, and more. He's mm. slaying pussy while on his break to keep the cash flowing for his next financial fuck up. I blame Colin for all of this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what you expect when yeah, you it's it's ask these questions, Colin. <laughs> it's I mean, you're just asking for trouble, but that is what Discord has said. Thank you so much, Discord. You're, you always shed some light on uh these questions they do yeah yeah <laughs> you're right i did ask for that so they thank just, you this word for providing what i asked for <laughs> we just gotta specify that it's a red light right <laughs> all right facebook flow cleaner okay facebook <laughs> colin perkins admin february 24th at 2 55 p.m passes moonlights as a blank describe for his second job question for mission debrief halo infinite excavation site mission and a good picture colin a good picture passes so we got a good few responses actually here, which is pretty fun. Also, side note, we have 117 post reach numbers. That's really good. That's really nice. I like that. Ooh, yeah. uh, Jonti says, strip dancer, he can leave his hat on. I like it. Lucas, a ballet dancer. I've never seen a brute with that much armor move that quietly. That's true. He really did sneak up on you. Mm -hmm. uh, Brad says, we all know it's really Ian who moonlights as Bassus when he's not working on the website. Mm -hmm. Who else is that legendary? Ooh, I like it, Brad. Nice. Uh, Matthew says sign language interpreter for the hearing impaired he officially works for Atrox and Eshram during their speeches but occasionally signs for Craig at his various shows around Zeta Halo super nice guy big advocate for accessibility within the banished that's pretty funny uh, and we murdered him Lance <laughs> says yeah uh, physical therapy trainer Luke says King Kong impersonator Jared the banished Uber driver we got some Ubers in there uh, Brad again, when not overseeing Banish Dig in the dirt in his shiny gold armor, he's defending his title as Banished Long Jump Champion from Chaklock. Bassus is a fanatic Ungai culture and history enthusiast. He often <laughs> gathers together late at night, huddled around a campfire, surrounded by his little grunt buddies listening with rabid attention to their stories of Flip Bam, the Vanquisher, and his trusty Goliath steed Wormy as they brave the great methane fires of Bahalo in search of the everlasting food nipple. Well done, Brad. Brad put some Todd in, man. Oh my yeah. goodness. Holy That's smokes, good. I want to read that. Um, <laughs> Dickie says he DJs at Club Era on New Alexandria. Well, he used to. That's pretty good. Manny, he's a MOA dealer. He could flip him and make a huge profit, but he eats more than he sells. <laughs> uh, Jimmy John says, soldier Gold. in the Krista Simp army. There's always one. And finally, Storm says, that one McDonald's employee Hell having yeah. to explain why they can't serve ice cream because the ice cream machine is broken. <laughs> Very specific story. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. Those Facebook I don't think you really could uh, complain if he told you that. Yeah, yeah. That's why they put him up front. <laughs> Wow, th those those comments really humanized Bassus or brutized him. Yeah, a lot of people. I yeah, kind of feel bad that we killed him. He came in pretty positive overall. He's like a nice guy. Yeah, pe people like Bassus. He's on feel... Facebook and Discord. He's just a piece of trash. <laughs> yeah. He's 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 pounding some some ass on Discord. You know, <laughs> he's doing some stuff for sure. For sure. <laughs> he's it's versatile. Living. You know, he's versatile. <laughs> we appreciate Jeez. that about him. Because he used the word moonlight. Guy. He's a good guy. He's That'll dead now, though. For a debriefing of the excavation site mission from Halo Infinite on the next episode, we'll be debriefing another mission, Conservatory. 
Send us your thoughts Ooh. at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at Podcast Evolved on Twitter. You can also support the show by visiting podcast or not podcast. Don't don't visit Podcast Evolved on Patreon. Visit Evolved on Patreon. Until next time, Evolved. 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 Evolved.